Hello everyone. So in this video, we'll be discussing about the concept of demand and specifically the factors that determine the demand for a commodity. Before going further, we need to know that the concept of demand was given by Alfred Marshall in 1890s in his book called Principles of Economics. So first thing we need to understand here is that what can be called demand? And for this, we need to take into account five characteristics that help us determine whether a particular desire or a particular thing can be called demand or not. So first is the desire. So it is important, important for the consumer to have the desire to consume a commodity. If it is so, then this can be called your demand. Second is the willingness. There must be a willingness to consume the commodity, right? For example, young children do hesitate in eating vegetables. So then in that case, in their case, vegetables cannot be considered as demand because they do not have the willingness to consume it, right? Third is your ability to pay, right? So one must be able to pay for a commodity unless and until you do have the ability to pay, right? Only then it will be called your demand. If you do not have a, an income, a sufficient income, for example, your income is say $1,000 per month, but you want to consume a commodity that costs say 1 million, right? At that particular mo moment, so in this case, you do not have the income or you do not have the ability to pay. And as a result, you will not be included in the demanders of this commodity. Fourth is the price of the commodity, right? So you must be able or you must accept the price of that commodity. Right. So if you think that, no, the price is not justified, then in that case, your demand is not included in the demand for a commodity. So price is another factor that determines whether there is demand or there is not. Right. So, yeah. Fifth is the time. So what is your time of consumption? That determines the demand for a commodity. At what time do you want to consume it? So if you think that, okay, I want to invest in, uh, you know, I want to uh, take admission for my child 10 years down the line in a college, right? Then in that case, the demand for that admission or demand for that seat in a college would not be considered at present. It will be considered 10 years when there is actual admission taking place, right? So what is the time of your consumption? You will demand a particular commodity five years from now or 10 years from now will not be considered at present, right? So these five factors, they are very important to determine whether there is demand for a commodity or not. Right. Coming on to the factors that affect quantity demanded or the factors that affect demand. So demand for a commodity is a function of firstly, the price. Obviously, if the price is too high, you will demand less. If the price is low, you will not hesitate in spending more on that commodity or consuming more of that commodity. So this states that there is an inverse relationship 
between the price of the own good and the quantity demanded of it. Meaning a high price would imply a low demand and vice versa. Second is the income of the consumer. If the income of the consumer is high, then in that case, the demand will also be high, right? So there is a positive relationship between the income of the consumer and the quantity demanded or demand of that product. Third is the price of related goods. Now, in this case, the related goods are of two types. First is your substitutes. And second is your complementary good. Substitutes are those that are consumed in place of one another. So if the price of your substitute good, right, it is high. If the price of the substitute good, say Y, is high, then in that case, the demand for commodity X will be high. For example, take the example of Pepsi and Coke, right? So they are substitute goods, right? So if the company Coke increases its price, right? So the demand for Pepsi would increase and vice versa because they are considered to be substitute goods. They are consumed in place of one another. Right, there are factors that differentiate the two commodities and so on, but still they are considered to be substitutes, right? Then you have complementary goods, which are consumed together. So these are two goods that are consumed together, right? So if the price of a commodity, say Y, increases, quantity demanded of X would fall in that case. For example, the case of pen and ink, right? So if the price of pen increases, the demand for, you know, ink would fall and so on, right? So because they are complementary goods. Then, Fourth factor involved is your tastes and preferences, right? So if there are favorable tastes, if the tastes are favorable, then in that case, the demand would increase. For example, the case of seasonal vegetables or seasonal fruits, right? Because the tastes are favorable during that season. And as a result, the demand is, you know, increases. In case of unfavorable taste, the demand falls, right? Then is your advertisement outlay. Now, how much the company is investing in advertisement? Then in that case, also, you know, the demand, the quantum of demand can be determined. So if the company is investing heavily in advertisements, then in that case, it is making an utmost effort to make the consumers aware about a particular product. So if a constant advertisement goes on in front of your eyes, then in that case, you will know about that product it will be retained in your mind and you might even prefer it for once, right? So a higher advertisement expenditure by the company, there, will, there are chances that the demand will increase, right? Then is sixth is your future expectations of price. Now, future expectations, if you think that prices in future will increase, then you will try to hoard more and more at present. So as a result, the demand at present would increase. This happens mostly in cases in a war-like situation or in a depression kinds, an economic crisis kind of a situation, right? Similarly, if you think that prices will fall in the future, you will tend to hold the demand at present. So as a result, the demand at present would fall, 
right? And then seven is your number of customers in your market. If you enter into a market where the population is high or the number of customers is high, right? Then in that case, the demand would be high, right? So these are the factors that determine the demand of a product, okay? In the next video, we'll be discussing about the law of demand, including the reasons for downward sloping demand curve, and uh, various effects like income effects, substitution effects, and so on. So hope this was clear. Thank you so much for watching the video. See you.